Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. Uh, Happy New Year, 2020. Now look, it's the first day of the new year and you're probably sick of me already. Three videos in a row. <laughs> but uh, I just had to keep on schedule. Uh, today, uh, i got a couple things I want to talk about. Uh, I was thinking about a story. Uh, every once in a while, somebody will pop into your head. Do you know that ever happened to you that you haven't thought of in years and all of a sudden you say, oh, I remember that guy. I was thinking about a guy that I, I used to drive a bus uh, many years ago. I did it for 16 years here in the city. And I used to pick odd hours. And because uh, if you picked odd hours, you didn't have to deal with the crowds. Like if you picked rush hour, rush hour, it was not, it was packed. You were constantly telling people to move to the back of the bus. It was crazy. But if you picked kind of odd hours, I used to work from four in the morning till usually 12.30 in the uh, afternoon. So I only got one rush hour. And that was when people were going to work, which was, I thought was better because they kind of go to work in dribs and drabs. But when they get out of work at five o'clock, it's a madhouse, right? So... Uh, but those early trips at four o'clock in the morning, you know, you would pick up some, you know, people that are going that early, uh, usually different kind of people. And, and uh, there was this one guy I used to get on the bus all the time. And, and he was, a, it was an amazing guy, uh, very well rounded. It took me a few months before we started, uh, you know, talking uh, because there'd be nobody on the bus. He would sit in the front seat and then we would just start conversing. And before long, we became friends. And he had an interesting life, but he was a big conspiracy theorist. Now, you remember a couple of weeks ago when I said about the iPhone, the battery's dying, and I said, you know, maybe I'm... But this guy was big into conspiracy. I mean, everything from JFK to the Twin Towers and everything. And uh, speaking of the Twin Towers, there's uh, something I don't know if you've ever seen on the $20 bill that he pointed out to me, and I, it, it blew me away. And it was right after 9-11. So I don't know how this guy knew about it, but uh, let me show it to you. If you've never seen it before, it's kind of a interesting th thing to show some friends or something if you have a get together. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this before, so I'm not going to dwell on it. But I just for those of you who haven't, I, I always when I first saw it, it blew my mind. OK, so you have a $20 bill, OK, a 911. So if you add nine and 11 together, you get 20. So that's why you use a $20 bill. This is Andrew Jackson on the front. On the back is the White House and uh, beautiful engraving, by the way. And uh, what you do is you fold it in half lengthways like this, just like that, you know, one fold, and then you fold it in half again. So now that's only two folds, right? Like that. Now what you do is you open it up like this, just like that, and you take the, the hold the 20 upside down like this, and you fold this like this, one side up like this, bringing it to that center fold, and the other side up like that. Get them even on top like this, you know, so you want that even, so that all lines match up. And when you look at it, that's supposed to resemble the World Trade, the, the Twin Towers, when they were on fire and they were struck. And look close, and it, it, you know, it, it does resemble it, right? And then he said, when you turn it around, this is supposed to resemble, this is the, uh, resembles the, uh, the Pentagon when it got struck in the middle, right? With that, you know, they say the airplane crashed into the Pentagon. So, again, it works on every 20, and... Uh, you know, I was always, I, but first of all, it always amazed me, like, who thought of that? Who figured that out right after 9-11 that, you know, some origami specialist or something figured that out? Because I'll tell you the truth, that's that to me is just uh, just mind-boggling. Anyway, that's uh, that's the conspiracy theory with the 20 Okay, next up, I have a, a really inexpensive tool that I don't know if you've ever used before. This is a jeweler's loop. And if you've never used one before, it's a fantastic tool to have around the shop, especially if you're trying to read small drill bits, things like that. And uh, let me talk a bit about Now, this it. here is a, uh, what's like I said, what's known as a jeweler's loop or an eye loop. Uh, they come in different powers. This one's 10 power or 10 times. Uh, and, uh, you know, I found 10 times is a, seems to be a pretty good one because uh, your focal length, you know, if you get too uh, much of a power, like a 30 or 40 power on here, it, it's very hard to handle. But this, it fits right around the eye. And um, what happens is when you put it on, uh, you have both your hands free to look and do whatever you have to. And, for example, if you want to read this drill bit here, you know, it gets a little tough, especially with the light and everything. It's hard to see. Whereas you take this loop, you put it over your eye like this. And uh, and you could see how easy you could see that's 930 second that uh, that drill bit. But this is always a, a really good thing to have around the shop. Uh, a plastic one. It's inexpensive. I think I bought five of them for about uh, twelve dollars. I leave them all around upstairs, downstairs. And you never know. It's always good to have one in your first aid kit for pulling out splinters or something for them real small ones. Good thing to have 
I suggest you should give them a try if you've never used one before. A jeweler's eye. Okay, for our first project of the year, I want to start off with uh, my good buddy Dan Semmel, who's my mentor. Gave me this uh, screwdriver last time I saw him, and uh, it's been sitting here, and I, I just, you know, felt like doing... I, we haven't done a screwdriver in a while, and this one is, uh, I believe it's made in Germany. We'll look at it for uh, our post-wire brush evaluation, but we got a couple of things we got to... You see, there's a little bit chipping around the uh, the rivets there, because these are two-piece rivets. You see the... Uh, the circle and so that's a washer that goes around it's got to be we got to peen that down a little bit and uh also if you look in the back here you know this uh i like to have this smooth and rounded around the back on the tail cap because uh that's a big thing to me i like a shiny tail cap because i never bang on my screwdrivers anyway i have you know enough tools that i don't have to bang on the ones i restored so uh you can see what it looks like the rust isn't isn't too bad you know, but uh, let's get started and uh, see what we can do with this. Now here we are at a post wire brush and post fiber wheel evaluation. Okay, so you can see um, it's coming along nicely. I was able to get these rivets down so that they're you know they're pretty good, and you can see what a nice job the uh, fiber wheel does after wire brushing here. And you can see over here it does say uh, it says steel warranted in Germany. Now on the other marking that's over here is a triangle, and it'll say a ten inch. Okay, you see that ten inch. Which makes no sense to me because the overall length of this uh, screwdriver is about 15 and a half inches, almost 40 centimeters. Now, uh, 10 inches would be here. You see where the 10 is? Now, when I put it from the end of the blade, right, look where a 10 winds up. It's, you know, it winds up <laughs> at the bottom. I guess so where it starts turning round to the tip is how they're measured. I don't know, you know, like this whole part don't matter. Anyway. Now we're just going to work on the wood. We still got to work on the back here. You see, like I said, you know, I like to get that all out of there. Remember what that looks like, because that's a big thing to me, the back of a screwdriver. And then we'll work on the wood. And, and I actually like the way the fiber wheel left this, but, you know, nothing beats the belt sander. And especially the fiber wheel will never get out these, these pits like this. So you need to get down a little further. But it's looking real good. Let's get going. Now this is what we have after the belt sander. You see what a nice shine that if you go down with the grits all the way down to smooth, you see how it, it just glistens, you know, that's what I like. And then we took care of the tip. Look what a nice job we did on the tip here, huh? Ah, uh, this is just beautiful. Like, you know, like factory, got the, the edge all squared off nice. And you know, that's, that's just fun to do. And uh, look at the rivets. See the rivets, you know, you peen them over and then you, you grind them and look at that. Now the back here, again, we didn't polish it yet, but this is what it should look like before you take it to the buffer. Now the reason we didn't polish it yet is because I'm going to coat this now. I'm going to use some amber shellac on here, get these handles nice and uh, colored and a couple coats of that. And then I'll go to the buffer later because if any uh, residual buffing or compound should get onto here, when it's shellac, you can wipe it off. But if it gets onto the raw wood, the shellac won't stick. So I like now that it's it's all uh, sanded down nice and smooth, we're going to put a couple coats of uh, amber shellac on Now you know my favorite part. Remember what the screwdriver looked like before we started? And we're calling this project done. Uh, I left this to look like an original restoration because I know Dan likes the original style. He don't even, he likes it, you know, with the patina and stuff. But this is actually the way the uh, screwdriver would have come from the factory looking very much like this. Uh, a lot of times they shellac the handles 
Uh, look at the bottom. Look at the, remember what this looked like. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I, I love when the end caps come out nice and polished like that. And uh, I just love that. Now, uh, left to handle. It's all original. Four coats of amber shellac. And then, uh, obviously, a coat of wax. You can see we left all the... The writing is still intact in here. You can see. And uh, just a beautiful polish job. And the tip. Obviously, the tip is really... What I'm most proud of, you know, that looks just like original and uh, just a nice job on here. I just, uh, I always like these type of screwdrivers, but I'm not a fan of, of wood and steel. But, you know, you can't, you can't uh, say that these aren't just classic in your hand and they feel so good. So, uh, this one's in the can. First project of the new year. Okay, so in closing, we have our first project in the can for 2020. I want to thank everybody and hope you have a great new year. Thanks again to Dan Semmel for the uh, screwdriver. And uh, hope to see you again soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.